Hi, this is Shane with Atlas CFO, and today I'm going to show you how to fill out our uh, scorecard template. Some people call them scorecards, some people call them KPIs, some people call them dashboards. Uh, regardless of what you what name they go by, the purpose is to spot trends quickly and easily in your business, um, looking at various areas or departments or divisions that are important to you. And so what we've done is we've created a scorecard based off some of our more popular requests from clients and made it available for free so that uh, if you don't have a scorecard or a dashboard, you can uh, download ours and start using it and uh, hopefully get some good information out of your financials and out of your business. So what we have, we have uh, three tabs down here in this Excel template. Uh, first one, the uh, the uh, end result is the dashboard or the report with the graphs and you can see we've got balance sheet ratios we've got uh, income statement ratios and I'm comparing your uh, actual results to a goal um, it's always good to have two numbers one's a baseline and one's uh, what you're looking at so that uh, you've heard the phrase uh, a number is just a number unless you have something to compare it to so that's why you'll always see uh, typically on our stuff anyway um, a baseline or something you're comparing or judging your results against and then whatever your actual results are that you're tracking. So over here we have the uh, some additional info on revenue and uh, per hour statistics and some more stuff on backlog and uh, tracking um, expenses. A lot of technology and a lot of vehicle expenses or uh, they can get out of control quick so a lot of contractors we work with like to uh, track them monthly and compare them to their budget. So enough about uh, the end result. How do you get info in here? Well, the input tab is everything in blue is set up so that you just uh, at the end of the month you go in and you just start at the top here. Key your data in off of either your financials or your uh, payroll reports or um, you know whatever hopefully prepared documents you have. We try not to uh, have someone go out of their way to have to recreate things. We try to use info that's already created and it's in a, um, an ongoing process just to make it simpler. So for instance, our accounts receivable, you can see here we're tracking total AR. So you just get your aging report and you can fill in in each month and you can put in what's in 90 days and over and uh, track it. And then once you key that in, the graph will update. And so when you put a new month in, Let's go over here and let's just say October is a million seven fifty. And let's just say nobody's really collecting our over 90 and it's just completely out of control. So once you key that info in, you can see right now we're still in September. So if we go click on this graph, click on the filter down here where it says chart filters, scroll down to you get the uh, next month or so that you've updated, check the box, hit apply and you can see here it is now updated so you can see our trend line our billings are going up but so is our, our over 90 so we're probably if we're not having trouble with cash we're probably going to because we're billing a lot and we're not collecting it we've got a large uh, gap here between how much we're billing and how much is is uh, coming in because this 90 day and over column is really climbing so back to uh, back to the input section again so under and over billings, again, this would just be something you get off your job schedule. And let's just say you're half a million underbilled, but you're only 200 underbilled. So that's another one that uh, we'll go over here, click the graph, click the drop down, the filter to drop down and get your next month. And just hit September, check the box and hit apply. And you can see here, so now we've added September. So we've got underbillings, which is work you've done but not billed. Overbillings are work you have uh, not performed, but you've already billed ahead on. So, uh, you know, this, this uh, we've been overbilled, now we're underbilled. So this, again, with this, and if this was you and you're looking at trends and you've got 90 days climbing, you've got underbillings climbing, you're uh, going to have to jump on that. You're going to have to get some people involved and get the team rallied because that is going to cause a severe cash crunch. So, but to just I'm illustrating this just so you can see how to put the data in. And down here we have oh, the current ratio if you calculate that. Um, we have a goal. So, let's just say you calculate that every month and you key it in. Um, it's really quick to 10 key. 
Same thing if you track debt to equity. You can just drop it in here in this blue section. Uh, income statement, we've got revenue for a couple of divisions, and we've got total revenue. And we've got gross margin for each division because you want to make sure they're tracking and making money. Um, overhead, your SGNA, general administrative, and your uh, indirect overhead, you can put that in here. Of course, your bottom line, so you can make sure it's uh, tracking where you want. And then we've got some percentages. <coughs> Excuse me, if you wanted to look at gross margin percentage, overhead, net income. We've got those in here. If you want to look at uh, goals, you could set goals in here. So we've uh, added, let's just say we get crazy and we think we're going to do 30, 35% in July and August. So we can add that in. We go over here to July and August in the income statement section. And you can see that our gross margin percentage is down here. Our goal is going up, but uh, our actual is uh, still staying steady. So maybe that that uh, bears some warrants some investigation. Uh, down here we've also got backlog if you have a goal of how much you want to book if you're rolling off 800,000 a month you probably want to be trying to replace that so you uh, don't get into a work shortage uh, headcount you want to make sure your people are productive you can track uh, payroll hours uh, total and overtime and then down here we've got some per employee statistics we've also added and of course the technology and the vehicle expense I mentioned and the budget line items. So this is just, this is just a, kind of a, a mix of a lot of key items we see people report and track and they've had success with. And we put them out here on our free scorecard. Of course you can add more. It's easy to add a graph and add a line section in Excel. And we can do a quick video on that and I'll put it up separately in case it's helpful. Um, anyway, if you have a scorecard, good for you. If you're tracking things with a dashboard or measuring KPIs, uh, if you're not, you should be. And we uh, think it's important, it's valuable. And so we've made this free template uh, available for you so you can uh, get started and uh, make it your own and track your info. If you're interested, all you need to do is go to our website, atlascfo.com and then scroll down here where you see click here to get your free financial scorecard template it lasts for your email and then you'll get a link to download it and I think you also get some uh, free classes or courses with it in videos on how to use it some key items we see people track and how to read the data so there you go I um, hope this is helpful if uh, it is Feel free to use it. If you have questions, email us at hello at atlascfo.com, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.